From the lads of Modern for Advantage, we are heading out to Warlord Day. Woo! Let's go! Well, Warlord Day, here we are with the big man, John Stallard, managing director, yeah, that would do. chief wizard, all of the above. All, all of the above. Uh, there's a wide variety of personal armaments uh, in John's office. Some sabres back there. Is that a heavy cavalry straight sword I can it see? Is. And these are horse pistols with shot, just in case you need to use them. Yeah, these are my 17th century wheel lock pistols. Pride yeah. of my collection, these ones. Right, so right. I bought them in just to show them off. So they, well, they, thanks they, for taking the trouble to, <laughs> to film them. They look, they look lovely. So, um, Warlord Day. Then we we were here last year. We had a, we had a look around. It was it was a lovely day. There was some lovely displays going on of of, of many of your games and products. We're here today, back bigger, better. There's even there's even a, a, a there's no coffee wagon today. The drinks are the drinks are provided. So what, what's the Warlord Day? It's a growing thing. Yeah, it is a growing thing. It's a, probably about our fourth one we've had. I mm -hmm. think maybe fifth. Uh, um, and. Yeah, we just like to meet our customers um, mm. and and show off a bit, and uh, it's good, very good for my marketing team to see who's buying our product. Mm. Because um, if you don't see who you're selling to, uh, you imagine who you're selling to, and that's mm. no good. Uh, yeah, um, right. You know, and uh, I, I, we we learn a lot. We just had a couple of seminars, and uh, it, it educates me and Paul Sawyer mm. into the the mindset and and the way our gamers and our customers are thinking. And uh, most of the time, I can second guess people because I am a war gamer. Yeah, uh, but you know, you suddenly realise that. You're in danger of doing your hobby rather than everybody's hobby. Right. And that's a, And you've got to make money, right? And we have to make money. Yeah. And uh, so we just finished the uh, uh, the Q and A session, and we had some great questions actually, mm -hmm. and some good observations. Um, when will this be in plastic? When will that be in plastic? When will this be in plastic? And it was. It did get a bit. Well, when we get to it, when yep. we get to yep. it. Um, and that's the plan, right? For anyone that doesn't know, it will all be in plastic one day. It will all be in plastic. We just need day. to live long enough. We do. And uh, I just have to put the things I really, really want to see myself out on top of the pile first. Right. And that. And who gets final set? You or Paul? Um, gets, if you don't know, Paul runs the studio here, right? He, he does. Makes, he makes a lot of those design decisions. He does. And yeah. uh, he, uh, he will sneak his things to the pile of the, the top of the pile. Right. Until I, my toys come out of the pram and say, no, we're going right. to do this now. He right. Goes, all right then, boss. We'll do that then. And... Uh, and there's no one great overarching uh, uh, principle. You just got to make something that people like, you know. And, yeah. And so yeah. far, we haven't got it wrong. So no, no. I mean, you you you've got a broad range of games. Yes. There. I mean, all too broad. Arguably. Well, uh, so we'd seen. I'm I'm not sure. Um, I've got the impression that you're moving perhaps to a model with some of the games, maybe like Slain and, and Judge Dread, that they may be cycling in and out of circulation over time yeah, I because of shelf space. And yeah, and, and brain space and marketing space. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very much. A Games Workshop that taught me that many years ago, that, you know, they would bring out, uh, well, Blood Bowl would be the classic. It's been in and out more times mm -hmm. than I don't know what, you know. Yeah, but the love never goes. And, uh, and Space Hulk. Yeah, I remember when they said they'd never bring out Space Hulk ever again, and then mm -hmm. they did. Uh, and it's great, because it's an even better edition each time. Yeah. And, uh, if We're old school, we still play first edition. White Dwarf supplements and everything. Because that's, that's, the, that's the experience we're trying to relive. But so you think for, for some of those smaller parts of the Warlord franchise, you yeah. might see them come in and out periodically. Well, what we've actually done is physically remove them from our factory here and move them to... Skytrax in Loughborough, which is our right. second secondary place. Uh, yeah. We bought Skytrax two or three years ago. And so we actually produce them there now. So yeah. it, it doesn't clutter, if you like, our, 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 our top 250 items which we sell here. Which are presumably bolt action and Napoleonic. Bolt action, 48% of what we sell is bolt action. So, uh, yeah. Our viewing figures would say, yeah. would hold that up. Yeah. I mean, it, bolt action is... So anything that gets in the way of getting bolt action out it has mm. to be, has to take its its place. Yeah. All right, right. People will kill me in, uh, on my channel if I don't ask some of the big questions about future ask releases. Right, and you may have already answered some of these questions in seminars today. Gentlemen's Ward, you out very soon. Yes. As a starter set, 
I, I, I love, I've loved all three of your bolt action principles starter sets. Uh, this being this being the third one, but I think that they've got better each time. Thank you. In so far as I think the IP around this kind of US airborne troops is really strong, but as a as a starter set, if that's where you started, only having twelve Germans against twenty four paratroopers, it didn't it didn't feel like a very fair game, even if it played out like that. And you you know, so that, that but I liked it as a place to start collection. You then had the Island Assault out. Yes. I really like that you'd gone and sculpted some resin pieces unique to that theatre. Those oh, little spider holes, holes and yeah, stuff. Quite we played, at one point you'd had a guy working <coughs> on something called Firefight with really small numbers of figures in bolt action. We played a game of that using that, you know, sort of Japanese ambush on a camp. And, and, and I thought, they're nice because they're unique to that, that little bit of the war, yes. those small island fights. And now this next Gentleman's War thing coming out, not only are there some of the newer sculpts, the Africa Corps and the 8th Army, those armoured cars, people have been desperate for uh, some of those. I've been wanting the 222 in plastic for a long time. Yeah. And the Humber's a beautiful looking vehicle. Those, I mean, it's beautifully ugly, but, but I love it for that. It's a really iconic vehicle. Well, the British are supremely good at making ugly vehicles. <laughs> only, only are you mother, saying Churchill isn't beautiful? Only mother could love a, a Churchill tank. It's or a war so gamer. Ugly. Because he was, prefers the so stats. Ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it looks too long. Sorry, I interrupted you there. No, no, no. That's that's right. But the balance in that as a as a place to start, they're they're, they're near identical forces, but like well, action. It's those cosmetic. It's those immersion differences, right? Well, I think the Eighth Army and the DAC are probably uh, they're two of my favourite box sets. I, they're, mm -hmm. they're just very clean models. Yeah. They're just and um, a couple of them, if if you remember, actually. Oh, a lot of homage to air uh, Yeah, yeah, the potato masher thrower. Exactly. And... Make it just like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it just clicks in your mind. So, yeah, so definitely. People of a certain age particularly yeah. like it. Yeah. Uh, the two armour cars are absolutely tip-top, and uh, they'll be released separately uh, shortly after the game. So you don't, you don't have to buy the box unless you want it right now. It will take uh, two or three months before yeah. the release, so yeah. if you do want to get your hands on them, but yeah, well, I think I think there's a lot of people want those. Yeah, no. I know I need two because I need one for my 1944 Northwest Europe Army, and I need one for the Desert Army. Yeah, the 222 has uh, has been a, quite a long time coming, but now it's here. It's going to be it's going to sell very yeah. well. Yeah, great. So um, after that. Any, any, are you able to, are we going to see a Panzer II L in plastic at some point? Uh, I don't know which the L is. You've got me. The Lynx, the late one. Oh, Lynx. God, yes. Oh, what Lynx. Thinking? What am I thinking of? A Lynx. Oh, I'd love to see a Lynx in plastic. Well, I mean, you're the man that can make it happen. Oh, right, or the right. guy in the office next door. It's one of those things where, as we know, they didn't actually make very many of them. No. no. We do it in resin. Yeah, of course. We do do it in resin, and it sells well because it's... Such a sexy looking beast. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, it does what, and in bolt action, it does what you need a light tank to do. Yeah. Puts out a lot of shots and I doesn't cost too many uh, points. I'd be killed by people if I put a Lynx out before putting out a normal Panzer II in plastic. Ah, those early war people, they're <laughs> odd. Everybody wants the splendid <laughs> Panzer. No, you're, you're, no, no, I'm, I, no, I like, I'm in early war as well. No, I know what you mean. But, but a plastic Panzer II, is that, is that in there? Oh, definitely, that's on the list. Plastic yeah. Panzer II. We've got a. Um, uh, e Easy Eight Sherman coming out which with the nice. dodgy suspension. Yeah, that right. Would be the one. But that's that's the movie. Uh, yes. uh, it's the Fury Tank, right? It may look remarkably will it, like it. Will it come with accessories? It might. <laughs> right, there you go. It might look quite. A lot of people already kit bashed one. one from your yeah. other kits. Yeah, no, it's, uh, so that's looking very good. Yeah, right. Uh, we got some uh, in resin. We got some Desert Kubel wagons with the bigger tyres, the balloon. Oh, did they? they they're yeah. bigger tyres. Yeah, which look really nice. Uh, what else have I got? I'm not being evasive. I'm trying to remember. But when you get my age, you can't, can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, plastic kits. So, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, the Easy 8 and uh, those two armoured cars. Uh, oh, that's all I can remember. That's so, yeah, there was some talk of some fins, but they're probably not in plastic, are they? No. Fit, n n nice new range of fins, but they'll yeah. be either in resin or metal. Right. Uh, really resin. Nice. Siocast resin. Yes. Yes, the old the old fins that people are very affectionate about, but they are very old models, and uh, a lot of people like them, uh, but they're not tip top models. I would suggest so we're redoing. Yeah. And it's good to hear model companies say that you know it's like we think we can do better, so we're going to do this again. Well, when I was at Games Workshop all those years ago, I remember as being a callow youth of twenty two, mm. I was looking at some of these models, thinking, "Oh, these are amazing." 
they can't get better. And now I look at them with my rose tinted spectacles. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're not there, there is more than one way to hold a rifle. They're not great. No. And, uh, no. And, you know, it's the, no wonder they're redoing Space Marines every three or four years. You just make them yeah. better and more exciting. And bigger in that and case. Bigger and better. And yeah. Oh, it's just great. But some people love all that old, old well, stuff. We, we, we had to, we, we, uh, when we made our Germans plastic, our, our original plastic Germans World War II, we've retired them because they mm. uh, they weren't the best models. They, 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 they were the, our first ones in, in mm. World War Two, but now when you put them against our modern day Panzer Grenadiers or SS or, uh, mm. or Russian Front, they, they're nowhere near as good. No. So we have to retire. Same no. with the British. And it's a shame because you spent, you know, perhaps twenty thousand pounds on tooling uh, yeah. on these things, and uh, say goodbye to that tooling is is you know catch you here in the wallet. Yes. <laughs> in the wallet. Yes. But Keeps you in the wallet. Better, but if you're making better models, it's the right thing. I mean, for do. me with your stuff, the big one is it's the it's the arm weapon yes. situation. Yes. The, with the two separate arms and then the weapon, yeah, you've got options, but it's a lot of work. It is, and it just doesn't look right. And as I get older, my eyes are not as good as they were. You know, I already have reading glasses for modeling and painting. Oh, yes. Um, but when the, the, the weapon is sculpted with the arm, it's just such it's a amazing. joy to put on, an absolute yeah. joy to assemble them. Yeah. No, and you really notice it when you go back to an older kit that doesn't do that. And you've popped everything off the sprue and you're looking for the correct left arm. Ooh, no, yeah. No, I know you wouldn't thank us for that. <laughs> no, no. But did it. Did it for many years and very happy with them. So that that's um, a Bolt Action's near future. Warlord Epic. Yes. You started with the American Civil War. You got that one sprue out. People were pretty excited about it. You got that. You got that sense of mass, that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder thing. As we've looked through the, we've reviewed the Waterloo release. I feel that the sprues have been getting better and better in terms of there's what you put on each sprue is getting more and more varied, which is allowing you to have a bigger range of units yes. across the range with a small number of sprues. Yes. But you've pretty much covered everything we could expect you to put in hard plastic at this point, I assume. You've done the guard and some of the niche regiments are available in other materials. In resin, yeah, that's a good spot. Not everybody knows that. Yeah, and they're, and they're fairly new. And now you've done a range of, of, of named commanders and so yes. forth. Get yourself a ginger nay or whatever it is you might want all out there. And they're, and, and they're all nice. So presumably you're largely wrapped up with the Napoleonic epics for the foreseeable future. For the foreseeable future, yes. But... We are aware. Um, uh, we are aware that uh, there were other nations involved in the Napoleonic Wars. Well, uh, they weren't involved in the Waterloo were. campaign. No, they weren't. So, uh, and Waterloo's the big one. Yes, because Sharp was there. So it's true. Sharp was there. Yeah, as we yeah. know, and saved yeah. the day. So Waterloo had to be the biggie, and uh, yeah. and we've done very well with that. It's selling very well. Yeah. Uh, but we promised that we will do Austrians and Russians uh, if Waterloo carries on selling well. Then we mm -hmm. will sell um, the other nations as well, definitely. So, in the in the, are we talking short term, medium term, Austrians and Russians? This now this is the engine of the Napoleonic War, really. A, a, a good friend of mine, big Napoleonic player, fifteen mil. There isn't a Napoleonic War without the Austrians. No, they're in it right from the beginning to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting mostly hammered, but providing most of the troops. Getting up again, coming back again. They yeah, were yeah. they were tough. So pe people should be able to expect to have. Because people love painting in white, right? We all know that. <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves Speed paint white. paints. Um, um, Austrians and Russians in the works. Yeah, well, well in our heads they will be. In our not, heads. In the work, not in the works, but they are in our heads. Because mm -hmm. we, um, we know that they will be popular. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could go to the more obscure things. Uh, people might want Bavarians, but they're not going to want Bavarians before Austrians or Russians. I mean, people do like their own confederation state, right? And that's probably because you can have the whole army. Oh, it's, yeah. And people like that a lot. I understand that. But in a lot of cases, by building the other major nation units, you're going to get crossover uniforms yes. as part of that. So, uh, you know, uh, it, over the next three years, you, you should be looking to, to expand that Definitely. range in that middle period. Definitely. Austrians and Russians sounds really good. And is that going to come before Epic moves into any other eras then? Mm, that's the big question. I mean, I think last time I was here, I talked to you. I mean, it strikes me that things like hoplites, you know, go quite well in, in neat rows in a shield wall. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of shield wally dudes that would. Greeks and Persians would be very nice. Um, oh, the whole the Macedonian thing. Yeah, Macedonians. And of course, Romans against Celts is a classic. 
I think um, you do a box set on that in 28 minutes. And who wouldn't who wouldn't want Carthaginian elephants? In epic? Everybody wants Carthaginians because they're the British. We love an underdog, and they're the underdog, or they're the people that maybe should have won if they put more effort in. Is a better way of looking at yes, it. Yes, not just not together as the Romans. No, no, no. as together as together as the Romans. So um, uh, there's certainly other periods we're we're looking at um, for epic. Yeah, for epic, yes. And we're, we have got one already in the works, which will be quite exciting. Um, and that's all you're going to say on that? Yeah, well, I can say, otherwise Paul will kill me. But um, it's one where um, where we learnt quite well from the American Civil War. Uh, in the American Civil War, we just did one sprue, which yeah. cost enough to make, and the bases. But the Waterloo one has cost us deep in the purse to make, because we've had to make 11 different models. Yes. So we're talking well over £100,000 worth of investment in that. Mm. So you have to sell a lot of plastic box sets to get your money back. Mm. Uh, uh, there's quite a few armies with many and varied uniforms. That just, I say, it just means you have to make more and more tooling. Uh, so it's quite useful to find a couple of periods where you can get away with just perhaps one or two frames. Um, and uh, I think most of us could think of a few of those. Seven Years' War. Seven Years' War would be a classic. Tricorns and Pikes. Tricorns would be great. Uh, Steel of, Helmets and Pikes also works. War of Independence would be fairly easy to do. Um, war of 1812, that would be quite good. Oh, on the, on, the, on the Great Lakes? Yeah. So Because um, mm. we've already got the Brits. At least the Brits is the same uniform as the Waterloo ones. So you just In 1812, have, yeah, yeah. So you'd have to do the Yanks and their slightly strange Shakos and some riflemen in, in hunting shirts and things. But that, that could easily be done. And what about the locals? The the native Indians? Uh, yeah, well, you could put some of those on the sprue. Uh, in in they, skirmish order? Yeah, they, they, they'd suit both sides, yes, quite yeah. nicely. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Good idea. Very right. good idea. This, this, sounds, this sounds good. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting... I'd hoped that there was going to be more in the, in, in the epic There'll range. There'll always be more. There'll always be more. There'll always um, be more. It's, it's gone down well. It was, I mean, we. it was a... Last time you were over, really, it was uh, it was it was new to us doing the American Civil War. Mm. Was it a gamble? It was not really a gamble. I knew it would be all right because the, the level of investment putting in was not huge. Because if it, if it was a turkey on the American Civil, yeah, the single sprue yeah, thing, yeah, single yeah. Sprue, it can't. How bad could it be? I thought you know it can't be that bad. And it's been wonderful, is what it's been. Yeah. In fact... Uh, Are you going to go back and do a cavalry sprue? In fact, I can tell you, I think I can tell you, yes, I can. I think we're showing it off today. Um, because we weren't sure how well it was going to do, we, mm. we did the cavalry and skirmishers and iron brigade and zouars. We did them in metal. Right. Because we couldn't afford to tool them in plastic. Mm. But since then, we've now, doing a tool, which I think you might be able to see today, it should be kicking mm. around the studio, where we put some cavalry, uh, mounted cavalry, dismounted cavalry, skirmishers, and zouaves on one frame. Like you did with the Prussian Landwehr. Yes. There's a mix of unit so, types yeah. on there. And we'll yeah. do those in blue and grey. And mm -hmm. uh, so everybody can get uh, can get their, their pl plastic uh, elements in, in, in plastic. And uh, it will be a lot cheaper. Very nice to see. Uh, the only thing we haven't been able to fit in there is uh, the uh, Iron Brigade, because only, only the Union used them. Uh, the Iron Brigade guys with, yeah. with the yeah. John, there's so much information there, so many things to look forward to. Warlord Day has been great, uh, long, may it continue to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. You very much. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.